Um, today we are going to discuss some updates that we had in Map Poly and QTL Poly. And we are also going to present a new uh, tool to visualize uh, Map and QTL uh, results and connect those results with genomes. Um, but in this presentation here, I'm just going to show some results of Map Poly first. Then Gabriel will show the, the QTL poly updates. And then Chris, after this, will show the view poly. Um, OK, so first, first thing I, I would like to mention is that I'm, I'm, I'm very glad that we, we have an environment for, for an analytical environment for linkage and QTL analysis in polyploids now. Because more than loose softwares, we managed to connect the softwares using functions uh, acting as bridges between softwares. So for instance, if you construct your map using PolyMap R, you can import in Map Poly and vice versa. And you can, from that, you can use your map in Poly Origin to estimate the haplotypes and you can apply them in DiaQTL. So you have a network of softwares. And I think this is very important in this, in this um, group. Uh, and I'm very glad that we, we got that. Uh, but for this presentation, I'm going to show the, the workflow of Map Poly. And um, we thought we could uh, present the multi-population uh, features in Map Poly, but it is still in, in, in research codes. And to translate those research codes into, into user-friendly codes, it's a, it was a, a, a bit of a, uh, uh, it, it was difficult, you know, there's a lot of things you need to take into account after release a software. But uh, if you guys understand that just this workflow, the workflow for multi-population is basically the same. And then uh, what I'm gonna do here, I'm going to show uh, a hands-on in each one of these uh, modules here. So this workflow, as you can see, is very modular. You have nine modules here. And from one module, you can go to another module. And there's some uh, uh, connection between different uh, modules here. And you can mix and match those modules. And in each one of these modules, you can uh, you have some manipulation of your, your marker sequence, some things you can do. You can mixture maps. You can, um, you can select submaps and all of those things. And there's, al there's also a bunch of functions to graphically show what you're, what you're, you're doing, uh, not just as a result, but also as a diagnostic function. Um, so, uh, but before we go into the, into the hand zone part of this, this talk, so I just have 20 minutes, so I need to be very fast here. Uh, I'm just gonna show you some results we have with uh, uh, an interconnected exoploit family. As I said, we did this with, uh, uh, we, with some research codes in very shortly, we, we, we will be uh, release this in a form of a, a map poly in another version of map poly. So basically here we had three uh, connected uh, biparental populations. They are connected by some uh, of the, their parents uh, and they are exaploid sweet potatoes. In this case, we had uh, almost 30,000 markers our population was about 725, 23 individuals. Um, and um, the thing here is uh, we, we managed to build this map and uh, I, I need to be very brief here, but this is the final map, okay? And uh, the codes will be available, uh, but basically we, we could build a, a, a full genetic map of these three interconnected families. The most important part here is to estimate the recombination fraction matrix uh, based on all populations uh, at once, right? So we developed this algorithm to build a recombination fraction matrix based on several uh, parents. So if you do this in tetrapods, for instance, you can use this map to as an input in poly origin, or you, you, you can use Met poly also to infer your haplotypes in these multi-parental populations. Um, and this is just a zoom in, a, in, in this, in one of the groups. As you can see here, we have markers that are shared between all the populations, uh, in between all the full C populations. And we have a bunch of markers just 
shared by two populations and some uh, unique markers in each one of the populations. So when you merge all these markers, you can have uh, a joint map. Uh, and of course, you can estimate uh, the haplotyp uh, haplotypic inheritance in each one of the individuals in these populations. So for instance, here we have an individual from uh, the first population, BT, uh, and here you have the segments inherited from both parents, blue and uh, red. And here we have the, the reciprocal, the same thing. And here we have another parent uh, with another cross. Uh, but as I said, this is, this is just like a, 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 a case study that I'm showing you. But now let's go back to this structure here. And uh, I'm gonna do the, the, the hands on based on this structure, okay? So uh, I'm gonna open my R Studio here. And basically, if you don't have Map Poly installed, you just need to uh, install Map Poly tools, install packages, and just type Map Poly. And then you have Map Poly here, and then you install. Okay. Uh, here I have already Map Poly, Map, Map Poly installed, and I will call Map Poly here using the library command library comment and I put just map poly right and then this will load map poly and what we are going to do now is to uh, type vignette vignette and we type map poly start guide and then it will open this very brief introduction, but we are going to use this uh, as, a, as a, an example of this workflow here. So the first thing in the workflow, once you load the package, is actually the input, right? So MapPoly can input a lot of types of files, uh, CSVs, VCFs, it can input from FitPoly, from uh, MapPolyR, PolyRed, and UpDog. Uh, and but here in this example, I'm gonna use the CSV type of file. What you can do if you're using uh, our studio, what you can do is just select these lines here and just uh, control enter and it, it will run in the in the console here. So what we have here uh, is a tetraploid population. This tetraploid population is a real population is a potato population, tetraploid potato. And uh, here we, we have the, the full uh, data set in this paper here, we published last year. Uh, but here I, I, I have a subset of those markers just to make it uh, faster for this presentation, right? Here we have uh, more than 2000 markers. And uh, you, as you can see, we have 153 individuals. And we can have more detail about this population using this print comment. And here, what you can see is the number of markers per chromosome. So in this population, we have uh, information about the genome of the potato. Actually, one of the parents is, was, was used to, to sequence the genome of these populations is Atlantic. So, and here we have the number of markers per chromosome in this population, and here we have the types of segregations uh, in each one, in, in, in uh, the, the, the frequency of each one of the dosage combinations. We also can have the graphic, which will be something like this. And here we have the same thing about the, the, the dosages, just in a form of a, a bar plot. Here we have a color code uh, uh, genotypic information for the doses. And here we have the, uh, the, the p-value for the chi-square test, uh, considering a mid-million segregation uh, for all the markers in this population. So uh, let's return to the help page here. Uh, and one of the things here, so at this point, we load the data set. So we have the data set in the memory. Uh, again, if you have different, uh, if you have a VCF, you need to inform which uh, the, num the name of the parents for each one of the, the read functions, there are different arguments, but they are very uh, easy to, 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 uh, to, to understand. 
And then um, from, from here, what we can do is to start the next step, which is the filtering part, right? Uh, so the first filtering we are going to do is to see if there's some contamination in our population, meaning that are there some individuals that are, uh, um, that are uh, 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 from a different cross, sometimes uh, a selfie, uh, because this, this sometimes occur. So in this case, we use the AH, AGH matrix package to, to estimate the relationship between these individuals. And uh, we just use a projection here to make it easier. And if you see individuals in this region here in the bottom, so they are individuals that are actually a cross between these two parents. But you, if you see some individuals in this region here, probably there's something wrong with those individuals and you can uh, remove these individuals. So what you can do here is actually to select the, 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 the polygon here. And then you see, you draw the, the, the uh, a, in this case is a, is a, is a polygon and, and it, it, you can remove these individuals in the analysis from the, the analysis. So we remove two individuals because we are not sure if they are from this cross, okay? Um, the next thing would be uh, filtering for uh, missing data. And as uh, Agri showed us, so we have, uh, we are filtering here individuals uh, with uh, more than 5% uh, of missing data. You can change this using another threshold. Here we are gonna use five and we are gonna do the same for, um, for uh, the number of individuals. Actually the first one is, uh, is for markers and this one is for individuals. So, and here we are removing individuals with less than 5% of, uh, with more than 5% of missing data. Okay, so, and this is, uh, would be the filtering part. Um, as I said, I, I'm just, is, this is just in a, in a glimpse. Uh, and uh, what I can do is to use this, the result of this, this part to filter also the individuals, uh, the, 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 the individual, the, the markers with uh, segregation distortion. And the way we use this is also assuming a threshold. In this case, we are assuming an approximation of the Bonferroni threshold. And um, if we use this, we have our data filtered based on the segregation. Uh, and now what we can do is to see the new data set with these filtering procedures. So here, as you can see, the, the segregation uh, Patterns are much better here. As we can see, they are more and more, much better distributed in, the, in this graphic. And you see less uh, black dots here, meaning that we have less uh, missing markers in individuals. And, and for the next part, uh, after this, so once you filtered, we are going to do the two-point analysis, right? In the, in the two-point analysis, I'm going to skip this. And do, in the two-point analysis, as Peter showed us, we can choose the number of cores in my, in this case, I'm running my laptop. So I just have eight cores and I'm gonna use seven to, because one is, uh, I'm using this one for, for Zoom, right? And then I will just run this to run the two point analysis. So this should take like uh, two minutes, but this is a good time to talk about this new implementation of uh, the pairwise recombination fraction in MathPoly. In the late, in, in, the, in, the, in, in our uh, uh, earlier versions, uh, this type of analysis required a lot of memory to process this. Uh, but now due to a new implementation that actually Gabriel did, it's a new type of parallelization. You can run uh, 10,000 markers in one hour in a computer like this one, which is a, 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 a laptop, or you can run uh, up to 50,000 markers overnight in a, in a workstation on, in a good, a good computer and you will not need uh, a lot of memory. Of course, for, for 50,000 markers, you need a lot of memory to gather all the information, right? But uh, in terms of processing, a uh, regular computer will do it. And uh, 
And this is actually a very difficult part to, to, to program with it, this took a lot of time to do because instead of using the traditional way we use to parallelize things in map poly, uh, which means that we load uh, our data sets to each one of the nodes and then proceed with the, the, the calculation in each one of the nodes in this type of parallelization, we load just once in each one of the CPUs are accessing the same data at the same time. And we, we need to do this for each one of the markers and from each one of the combination of, of the markers, right? And at this point, it should be uh, almost ready. Just let me see here. Uh, what we have here, yeah, it's almost ready. Okay. Um, anyway, just let me go back here. And uh, while this is running, I'm gonna show you, I'm gonna tell you what you can do when you have this two-point analysis, right? There are two types of point analysis, two-point analysis you can run here. The first one is a discrete point analysis, which is the one that we are running now, but we are running this with low memory. But you also have the probabilistic uh, way to run this is actually, uh, the interface between map poly and polymap R that Peter uh, 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 talked, uh, uh, told, uh, uh, showed us. And, uh, but in this case, we are just using the discrete because it's faster in this case, and then we have a lot of markers. And given that we have these two point uh, estimates, we can draw, we can uh, plot the recombination fraction matrix. And in this particular case, we have the genome information. And what we are going to try to do, oh yeah, no, yes, we have now here. And we are, we are, what we are gonna try to do here is actually use the genome information to plot the recombination fraction matrix and see if there's a concordance between the genome and the, and the re recombination fraction matrix. Something went wrong here, but this is okay. We can do it again. Yeah, so here we have the matrix. So this is the function to transform this to a matrix. And here I'm going to access, access the genomic information. Oh, I need to run this. Sorry, I forgot to run this thing here, which is with this function, get genomic order. We can get the genomic order, of course. And then we're gonna plot this next line here. Oh, uh, okay. Ouch. I can't, yeah, I'm gonna select this and run this. Oh, I need to run the first one and then the second one, right. And as you can see here in the plot, actually we have a very good agreement between the genome and also the, the, the recombination fraction and, and the recombination information because you can see clearly 12 linkage groups here. And as I said, this is real data set and uh, it's just a subset. But if you do this with the, with the full data set, it will be exactly the same, but we can see this. And once you have this, what you can do is to group these markers, right? And once you group these markers, you can use this function here. And actually in this function, we are going to use both sorts of information, the linkage information and the genomic information. When you do this, we will have this graphic here, which is an, uh, basically an UPGMA uh, clustering algorithm. You can do this and you can choose different numbers. I, I would just, just a different number here. Let's say five, just to show you what would happen. If I show five here, you can see that some of these groups will, will be in the same cluster, but, but actually 12, it's a good number, but because you can see that we have very distinct groups in these 12 groups. And here it's okay. And now just let me show you the results of this thing here, the G, which is starting this. So here we have the groups, the number of markers within each one group, each group, right? And here we have a comparison between the results we have in the two-point, using the linkage information in the genome information, right? 
So here, group number one, most of the markers were allocated in chromosome 10. And as you can see here, we have some markers allocated in the other chromosomes. This could be an error, depending if your genome is very well, uh, uh, is in a, in a, it's very well uh, uh, developed or meaning it's a good, uh, if the genome is around for, for a long time as this one, uh, if, as this potato genome. So we are pretty sure that these 88 markers belong to, to the chromosome number 10. And what you want to see exactly is exactly this diagonal matrix here, because as you can see, some linkage groups are related to specific chromosomes, right? And once you have this, you can use this information. In this case, we are going to use this make sec uh, uh, function. The make sec function is, is very important because it's a function that you use a lot in math poly, uh, which means that you have uh, uh, an object, you can make a sequence of ordered or unordered markers in this uh, using this, this first object. And here you're going to use this function to get the, the markers belonging to group one. In this case, I'm going to use the genomic information. As I'm going to use the genomic information, I'm just going to use this 88 markers here, right? And uh, as you and we can also get the matrix for this first sequence. And uh, what we can do here is use two sources of information to order this. The first one, as Peter showed us, you can use the MDS marker. If you use the MDS marker, these are the results. And I can, you can see that this is a very good matrix, because, meaning that this is kind of a monotonic matrix, meaning that you have uh, blue in the corners and red in the middle. Uh, and, um, but you can also use the genome order, which, will, be, which you, will have a very similar matrix, right? But this is given by the genome, not by the MDS algorithm. So what you can do here, we don't have time here, but what you can do is actually build the map with the two sources and you can evaluate the final likelihood and compare each one of the maps is better, right? We have this in the full tutorial, which you can find in, the, in, the, in, the, in our GitHub page. Now, using the, the MDS order, actually, what you're gonna do is to phase these markers and then I'm just gonna run this phase function here, right? I just need to reestimate the, the recommendation fraction for the, the, the markers within this group. And uh, once we reestimated that, it will start to, to build the map. And actually, this is a good, a good point. So in our new map poly with, oh, Jesus, oh, okay. This would not supposed to happen but we can do it again very fast, probably. Let's see here. Yes, I'll just, I know what I'm gonna do. Sorry for that guys, these things happen, but I have the complete analysis here, yes. And then I just can go back to my page here and then just run this one. And yes, it's not here. I'm oh, sorry about that. Oh, nothing is here. Let me see if this is here. Huh. Uh, live presentations, right? Uh, let me see. If, yeah, this is here. Good. Yeah. Now I'm just, just gonna use these again. Oh, okay. Just gonna use the group again. Uh, and after this, we're going to use the MDS order. Uh, M1 is not available. We can run the M1 here. Okay, so sorry about this guys. Uh, okay, and yes, there you go. 
Yes, beautiful graphic. Uh, again, two points. And now I'm not going to move. There you go. Then I can use this. Yes. No, as, as I was saying, um, the thing, the different thing about this version and the, and the multi, multi parental version is instead of just seeing uh, two parents here, blue and red, you, you see uh, more parents here. And that's what we are implementing in, in our new, new MathPol version. And, uh, and af actually, after this, instead of having just two phased maps, you have several phased maps. And you can upload this in QTL Poly the same way we are going to uh, input this uh, in this presentation. Uh, and also, a good thing to point out here is that uh, we can import these results in, in our new version. You can import these results in Poly Origin also. Because as you know, Map Poly doesn't take into account double uh, recombination. Uh, double reduction and we want to take that into account right and uh in the next version but uh but you, you can do this using poly origin at this point right and we are most concluded with with the map here uh here we ha just have 80 80 uh markers and so far 88.6 percent of the markers were included in this map uh, now it's uh, calculating the phase for the remaining markers. 92, 93. Okay, so, and after this, we are going to plot the final map. Okay, so I'm just going to plot the final map with the, with the marker names. So you can see, and I'm not going to change the size of this uh, graphic output here because the other time this corrupted my R Studio in my small laptop. Okay, so let's do this. And now I'm gonna plot this. And as you can see, you have your map, your phased map here with 80 St. Morgans and the and the and the and the and the, and the variants here. So I'm just gonna need to speed this up. And here, what you can do, you can reestimate considering a global error. Like Peter said, here you can also use in a global error. You can also use several global errors and to see which one has the higher log likelihood and choose from, 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 from this. But here it's a global error differently from, from, from Polymap R, which you can choose specific errors for each one of the markers. But so far it works great for us. And uh, yeah, just let me do this. It will take uh, some uh, some seconds. Yeah, as you can see here, there's an EM running. And then I just need to speed up here because there's Gabriel and Chris. I know that you guys are hoping that I finish this presentation very quickly. And I will do that. Uh, okay. You can, in this case here, you can compare different types of uh, re-estimation of the, 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 the linkage map. You can use uh, ordinary least squares to, to calculate your, your, your distance in the map. You, all, you also can use the MDS output um, and you can compare using this function here. But for this case, what we're gonna do here is to compute the homolog probabilities which is similar to, to what uh, uh, PolyMap R and uh, uh, PolyQTL R uh, does, right? In the, but in this case, we are just representing in another way. In this case, instead of those uh, uh, blue uh, profiles, we have the profile for each one of the, the chromosomes, the homologs here, and the probability. So, here we have a crossing over between these two individuals. This, this is basically the same output. And also what we can do here is to estimate the, the preferential pairing profiles, meaning that we can see if this, this is um, what the, what's the likelihood of each one of these pairs, uh, when the, the homologs find each other in the meiosis. In other words, if they are auto, allo, or, or segmental, uh, allo polyploids. 
Now, so in this case, you have a test, a formal test, a chi-square test here. And as you can see, the threshold is up here. And as we know, sweet potato, uh, potato is an, uh, an auto tetraploid. And here there's no evidence for allo exaploidy, of course. And uh, with that, I conclude my presentation. Again, oh, just a nice feature here. I'm sorry about this. Uh, so this is, you can run the whole chromosome, the, all the chromosomes using this, using a script that we have in our GitHub. But uh, here I just run one chromosome, but it, this will be like a repetition if you do the other chromosomes. And uh, what you can do here is to plot the results. Oops, no, it's not this, sorry. Okay. What you can do this is just, uh, what's the name of the function? Plot, uh, what's the name? Plot genome versus map. And just you put your map here and then you can, and there's no, oh no, it's not that. It's, it's maps dot, yeah, there you go, here. And you can have a comparison between your genome and, uh, yes, and here, you can have the comparison between the genome and the, and the, and the map. And sometimes, depending on genome, you have something out of this diagonal, but since this is an auto haploid and, and we have a very good genome for, for potato, you just see this block diagonal. And now, without further ado, uh, I'm just going to uh, give the floor to Gabriel. And sorry, Gabriel, I know you need to run now, but that's it. <laughs> okay, thank you. Thank you very much, uh, everyone, for attending this, this talk. Uh, I'll give a brief overview about uh, QTL mapping. Uh, actually, I. I, I will focus more on the QTL poly package, which, which was developed by Guilherme, Dr. Guilherme da Silva Pereira. He was a former postdoc here at NEC State, and now he's a professor at uh, Uni Federal University of Viçosa in Brazil. Uh, last year, I took over the, I took the maintenance of the package, and we have been developing and fixing some things and developing and improving the package. Uh, the major improvements since the last version, the last published pub public version were, was uh, the release of the package on the CRAN. So before that, uh, users needed to install the package, uh, install many packages before installing QTL Poly. You need to have um, a fixed version of summer package and other packages that could not be installed correctly in cl on clusters. So I think this is this was the major improvement since the last workshop last year. Uh, Marcelo, um, uh, can you put on the slide, please? Um, I, I see your. Oh, yeah, I'm sorry, I forgot. <laughs> <laughs> okay, yeah. thank you. Yeah. So um, as many of you know, uh, QTL mapping is one of the, the the ways we can use to try to assign or associate. Genotype, uh, genotypic variation to phenotypic variation. Uh, we have many other techniques we, we could try to do that, like um, GWAS, like uh, genomic wide association studies, uh, uh, even regression over single markers, uh, genomic selection models. And also, and despite, besides that, we have the, the complexity that, that is caused by the polyploidy. So as the ploidy level increases, we have many possible genotypes and many, many possible alleles. For instance, in a tetraploid, as, as Marcelo have mentioned, in a, in a, in a biparental tetraploid uh, cross, we can have up to eight alleles. Uh, and in an exaploid, we can have up to 12 alleles. And this can raise up to 36 genotypes for tetraploids and up to 400 genotypes in an hexaploid. So um, that many genotypes impose a lot of challenges for genetic mapping. Uh, the major issue I can mention is the number of par parameters that would need to be estimated in the model. So, uh, Marcel, next slide, please. So, um, in 2020, um, Dr. Guilherme da Silva Pereira published this paper on genetics, and he proposed a, a random effect-based model to map for multiple QTL and, at the same time. And... Uh, this was actually the, the, the method or the algorithm that was implemented in, in QTL Poly. 
Uh, next slide, please, Marcelo. Uh, basically, the method uh, uses uh, random effects to, to try to calculate and test for the significance of genomic positions based on the estimated component variant, vari variance, uh, on the additive variance for that, that genomic position. Uh, I, here are just three examples of uh, diploid, the tetraploid, and exaploid species. How we, we could have uh, the number of shared alleles between any individuals, any, any, any set of individuals in a full SIP family. For diploids, you can have up to two shared alleles. For tetraploids, you can have up to four alleles. And for a hexaploid, up to six alleles. Uh, the model that GitHub uh, proposed and is implemented in KTL Poly basically uses this genomic relationship matrix or the number of possibly shared alleles between individuals in a full seed population to estimate the, the variance, the additive variance for each one of the genomic positions. And we, uh, next slide, please, Marcelo. So uh, the algorithm is very similar to the multiple interval mapping model. So it basically involves um, one model that starts with no KTL. And then we, we perform a forward search uh, on the genome, scanning the genome and adding one KTL or one putative KTL at a time. We test for significance of each, each one of those positions. And then we can optimize, uh, we, we perform the model optimization. So we reevaluate uh, all KTLs conditional to the others in the model, but only the significant ones. Then we perform a backward elimination of KTLs uh, that do not present significant effects conditional to the others. And we can refine positions of KTLs and re-estimate their effects, their positions, and all other parameters associated to them. Uh, next, next slide, please, Marcelo. Uh, so I, I just mentioned uh, at the beginning of the um, of the second part that the 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 uh, KT, KTL Poly is publicly available on CRAN now. So this was the major improvement. Users can now install the package with just one command line from within R. But we are, as Marcelo mentioned, we are currently working on the extension of both packages, Map Poly and KTL Poly, to deal with multi-parental multi populations. We are also extending it to deal with multivariate models, such as multi-traits, including multiple traits at the same time, and including multi-environment trials. Uh, and, and also, we are integrating it with modern or other model structures, such as other techniques for model selection and also prediction of individuals and breeding values using genomic selection based models. Uh, next slide, please, Marcelo. So I, I will be very quick now just to demonstrate how the package works uh, for those of uh, uh, who, does, who, do, who do not have experience using this package. Uh, you can go to this link I will send here in the chat. Uh, this link goes to, to a repository where Marcelo and I and Chris, we have uploaded many, many files. I, I just sent it on the chat. So you can just download it, open our studio, install both packages, and open the script ktlpolystartguide.r. Uh, Marcelo, Please let me share my screen now. Uh, once you download it, the, the repository, you can go to Docs, then Tetra, and this KTL Poly Start Guide.R script will be available. You can just open it on your R Studio. I have, the, I have mine open here. You can install both packages directly from CRUM and load them. So I just show you very quickly. So I have loaded both packets. I will load. So Marcelo just mentioned uh, we, we can use the uh, two functions to export data from my poly to KTL poly. One of them is export to KTL poly. And the other one is cogGenoprobe or cogGenoprobe error. Uh, here I, I will use the output from cogGenoprobe. 
I just I am just loading the genotype probabilities of the map that Marcelo just shown us from the tetraploid population, the, the the potato population. Okay, here I have the output. I would just select two chromosomes just to be very quick. We we need to to run fast here. We are out, out of time, so I'm loading the the adjusted means for many phenotypes here. I will just select two, the first two phenotypes. I will con convert from pounds to kilograms and check. This is an important step. I receive lots of emails from people asking uh, why it's, it, it cannot read data because you need to make sure the names of individuals uh, on, your, on your phenotypic data as, as the role names here are the same as the, num the name of individuals in your map. Okay, so I have a command here just to check if the names are, are the same. So they are the same. And I use the, the function read data. I indicate here what are the genotype probabilities and the phenotypes, okay? And uh, I can also define the number of steps to calculate the, the, the conditional genotype probabilities. So here you go. Two phenotypes, two linkage groups, 152 centimorgans. Okay, so now I will just simulate uh, one, uh, uh, actually two phenotypes to calculate the, the new model, the, the score statistics for the new model. Then I will use this to, to proceed to the PTL detection model. Uh, both, as, as you may have seen, both uh, QTL poly and map poly were programmed or implemented to make things easier to the user. So you don't need to use lots of different commands. Uh, in this case, the function remin, R-E-M-I-M, -M, uh, performs almost everything. You just need to define some parameters and then the function does everything you need to do. So I just proceed with that. First, uh, it will search for the first trait. It will search for, for KTLs along the genome. Then it, um, the software pr provides some updates while it is running. And you will see that it will, it will find some KTLs. It, it will try to refine and remove KTLs and refine positions as well. This should, be, this should run quickly. Let me just, okay. Okay, so it detected one KTL, the first linkage group, position number 54 at 78 centimorgans. Another KTL was detected at a second linkage group, position number 50, 57. I will not run this, the second um, method to map KTL, which is based on a fixed effect model, but it is available on the script if you want to try. If you want to give, give it a try for your own data set or for the examples we provide here, you can just run this, this, uh, this last chunk here and not run just to make sure uh, Chris have enough, enough time to show the, the view poly package. Okay, so no more KTL were found. There was another KTL, a putative KTL that was not significant under the the threshold that we provided. It is refining the QTL positions now. Some, um, some of you, um, I don't know how many of you are trying to run this at the same time, but you notice that um, some of the, uh, we have some functions in, inside the package where you can diagnose the, 
the ktl search like we can plot the profile we can plot the supporting intervals against the chromosome size we can see where does the the, the ktl locate relative to the others how many ktls match with uh, along traits among traits action then we can we can also calculate effects for each one of the significant ktls some of them are also available on biopoly which chris will present right after that Uh, th there are other options. I'm not using that now because I'm using my laptop, but you can also, if you have, as Marcelo, as Peter mentioned, if you have more cores or CPUs available in your machine, you can just raise this number and the analysis will go faster. Almost all functions on the package have this, this option too. And I think Samuel uh, asked a question about defining seeds for simulation steps inside the package. So for the simulation step, we have uh, when defining the, so this, this simulate QTL function is easy to define the new model. So basically it defines a threshold for detecting QTL significance. We can set the seed here. So if you, if you use the same seed, of course, you have the same results. So this step should finish soon. Okay, so this finished. We can print the results. So there was there there were two two KTL detected for the first trait and one KTL detected for the second one. We can also plot them. I hope, I hope you, could, you can see here the, the, the curves, the, 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 the profiles actually. For both traits, they are combined in the same graphic here, but you can also change the, the grid to false, to true actually. And it will plot in different Okay, different, different profiles, okay? So after that, you just, you, you can fit model and you use the function fit model and you have other associated statistics calculated to the QTL. So here, for instance, we have the, the genetic variance associated to each one of the QTL. Of course, the same information, the linkage group where they, they are located, their, their positions, uh, the relative number of markers, if you want to go back uh, under the marker data set, also the, the residual variance and the heritability. Okay, we have all those statistics here. You can also plot QTL and compare their positions relative to the, to, to the others and estimate QTL effects. Here I show just the, the last QTL. So the QTL for SG06. So you, you can see the estimated effects for each one of the hap parental haplotypes uh, on that posi on the position where the QTL was estimated. And just before I, I, I pass the word to Chris, we, we have those four commands. They are very important because Chris will show us how to visualize all those results and explore them together with the linkage map and genomic information using VOPoly. So basically you need to save the data set, the model, uh, actually the, the, the search model for TTL, the final model, the fitted model and the estimated effects. So here I save them on four different R datas and they will be used by Chris to load on the VOPoly package. Chris, are you ready to share your screen? Yes, I'm here. Okay, so go ahead. Thank you. Okay. Uh, I'll give you another okay. five minutes since you're running a little behind. Uh, thank you. Uh, I think this is the correct screen. Yes, are you seeing my R Studio? Uh, yes. 
Yes. Yep. Oh, thank you. So uh, view poly is also on CRAN. So to install it, you just need to, to use the install package command. And I read did. So after you just library and call the package. And here is it. And it's a single command, just this. And you will see the package here, the, the, the app here. Are you seeing the app too? Yes, Chris. Yes. yes, okay. So this is the first page. Uh, if I don't have time to, to show everything, we did a tutorial video and you can access the tutorial here. And this is with Tessa's voice. Thank you, Tessa, for that. And this is just the about page. But if you go to the next page, the like we have, this is the input data that page and we have several boxes here to visualize it, it just open uh, with pressing the plus here. And the first box is about the example data set. Together with the package, uh, there's uh, the potato, tetraploid potato data. And it has uh, the entire analysis for the KTL and linkage mapping and the genome confirmation, but has only a subset of the individuals because the CRAN restricts the size of the package. But if you don't have a data set yet, you can go around and just explore the, the app features with our example. And I, we also made available the uh, other data sets, complete data sets in this link. So you can see here results from MapPoly, Kitel Poly, DiaKitel, and so on. So you can also test with completed data sets. But I, I download the, the, the the R data that Gabriel and Marcelo sent me. So I would just pick map poly option here and I will load the file just here, the map that Marcelo just did and submit to build the map, the, 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 the graphics. So here you can see if you don't uh, know exactly how to get to this object. There's two links. One will take to the map poly tutorial and the other one will take to a view poly tutorial. Both of them will explain how to get this, this input. And you can also uh, upload uh, maps from polymap R and you can see the same uh, links here and the places to you to upload the the data set. So, and you can, you need to, to inform some other things like discrepant probabilistic as Peter explained it before. And there's all also an uh, option for upload uh, standard formats. And for these ones it needs to be specific formats, but we provide some examples data, uh, data sets here that you can just download it and check the, how the, the, the format should be like uh, you just check and fit your data in this format for each one of the, the files, okay? And this is for the linkage map and works the same with uh, KTL results. So I will now upload the KTL files that uh, Gabriel just saved it. So just go back to here. And this is the data. This is the Remy. This is the Kitel effects. And this is the fitted Kitels. So just check if everything is matching and submit the Kitels. Okay. Um, now uh, I can also sub uh, upload genome information. This input files. Uh, are the same inputs that are used in J browser package. So you need to provide the genome FASTA file or a URL, URL with, uh, and with the address that you have the, the genome. Um, most of these files will need some the, the indexes together. And here you can find some directions on how to obtain these indexes. And there are several options, but if you don't have all these files, you can pick just one and the J browser will show only the, the, the file that you submitted. Uh, I will submit here uh, the URL of the genome. 
this one for faster and also the annotation file. Okay. And then I just submit. Okay, once I did this, I I don't want to, to need to upload all the files again next time that I use Viewpoly. So what I can do, I can download the data set. So I will just type the name of the data set here and download it here. I change the name. And next time that I, I access Viewpoly, I can just load it in the R, R environment and it will be available here. For example, here I already have two data sets available. So that I could just check here and submit instead of uploading the linkage map and the QTL analysis. The genome files you will need to, to, to upload every time because the address could change. Or you just upload the view poly here. Okay. Okay. Once I did it, uh, now I can check the graphics that are built according with the KTL. This first step is about the, the KTL to explore more information about your analysis. So you can select the, the linkage groups here, or you can select all, and it will show each linkage separated by dashed lines. And you can also select the phenotypes that you downloaded. And here I'm selecting both of them. And as I, as I showed before, you can upload a diaKTL or polyKTR R or KTL poly files. And this graphic can change the, the y-axis uh, according with the software that you use. In this case, it's KTL poly, so the, 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 the y-axis is with the log. And the triangles in the bottom is showing the peak of the KTLs. And the, the, the line is the confidence interval. And you can select the key tells that you want to explore. For example, I'm selecting this two. And if you open the box, it will show the effects. So this is interactive, so you can select more than one. It will show here, OK? And the effects can be displayed in three different designs. This is the bar design that uh, is also implemented the KTL poly. So it's the effect for each, of, each one of the parents of types and the intensity is highlighted by the, the colors of the, the bars. And this other format is in circle. We standardized the, 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 the effects between minus one and one to be able to compare the, the, the KTL's effects in the same linkage map, in the same linkage group, sorry. And here, because I'm selecting two, there's two separate ones. And also we have the allele's combination graphic design. That's this, the, uh, up the bottom of the diagonal is the sum of the additive effects with diagenic effects. And the upper diagonal is only the diagenic effects. But by now the KTL pod doesn't uh, output the diagenic effects. So here's empathy. But if you use diaKTL, you can have these results. And okay, the next box you can, uh, search in your progeny the individuals that has specific combinations of haplotypes. So, for example, we wanted one individual that has these this haplotype with these haplotypes here and this all all the, the the maximum values. I don't know if it's the best, but just to, to to show to you, like I will select the uh, this first trait the haplotype 1.3, so is this one. I will select the, the second trait, the haplotype 1.3. One second trait, haplotype 1.3, okay, this one. And the 2.2. .2. And the third KTL, I will select the 1.4. The last one, 1.4. Select four of them, then I submit haplotypes. And then view poly, we will output the haplotypes, the, the individuals and the haplotypes, uh, the, the genotype probabilities, graph similar of that ones that uh, Marcelo shows uh, for each one of the individuals that contain the combination of haplotypes that you selected. 
and can be many depending on the, the haplotype that, select, that you select the combination. And we have also a table with the breeding values and you can rank them and you can also download the table. And a table with the summary of the, the KTLS characteristics that you can also download. And going to the next tab, you can now relate these KTLs with the genome. And instead of selecting several groups, here's just, uh, you can select only one group because you will navigate inside this group through this range. So I select the both genotypes here and you can just select the region that you want to see. And here will be plotted a, a KTL profile curve for according with the range, like the color will change with the range. Okay, just to guide this selection here. And just below it is the, gra the graphic relating the linkage map with the reference genome. So if there is inversions or regions in the, the genome that has lower combinational rate, you can uh, also uh, check it here. I'll keep it here because uh, I then opened the J browser interface that just have a problem. Sorry, I don't know. Uh, I may, oh, I know what I did. Sorry, guys. I may enter with the wrong thing here. Yes, sorry. I will go back, okay? And show with the sample file because it's the wrong address. Don't do that, live presentations. Huh? I will show with the example data set here. It's the same thing. So we just come back here, here, details. Here, then I open. Okay, this works because the address is correct. And I this this bar here is connected with the bar here. So you can travel to the linkage map and see the, the direct relation between the genome and the linkage map. So here and here. And you can also navigate inside the J browser interface. This is an R package that I just embedded here. And his, his is the annotation file. And here you can zoom in, zoom out, and also check the menu that's here. And according with the range, the genes, the, 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 the annotation information will also be in a table that you can download this information. And uh, after we have a table also for the map, map information. So it's the same design. You can select the phenotypes and the linkage group here. And the key tells will be plotted here just to guide the, the selection. And also we repeat the KTL profile here. So it's the same thing. And here you can see the, the graphics that Marcelo also show about the, the, the parents' haplotypes. And you can zoom in and zoom out according with the range. It's also available the table that we use to do this graphic. So you can download it. It's the haplotypes information. And a table with the linkage map characteristic summary and the, the figure of the, the, the linkage map. We, we are still expanding ViewPoly. We intend to also uh, implement graphics for preferential pairing and double reduction. And we soon will see, you will soon see other tab here to, to check graphics of GWAS analysis. And I think that's it. Thank you.